In the past few days, I have had several discussions about a specific accounting error that I constantly see in the bookkeeping of self-employed individuals and freelancers, especially those who earn their money on various online platforms. It almost doesn't matter which platform I'm talking about, whether it's Airbnb or Upwork, the freelance platform, or if you're selling something on EloPage, or even if you're using PayPal as a payment provider. A mistake that I see very, very often occurs, and I thought I would just make a video about it and tell you exactly what problem arises and how you should definitely not do it. It happens very often. And of course, I'll also tell you how to do it correctly. There is an accounting rule that I would say many, many, many tens of thousands of self-employed individuals in Germany regularly ignore. And this accounting rule is called the prohibition of offsetting. For example, if you use PayPal and you invoice your client for $100, you don't actually receive $100 from PayPal. Instead, the client transfers the money to you via PayPal and you get the money paid out to you. However, this is after deducting the fees. That means, for example, only $95 will end up in your account to keep it simple, because the customer transferred $100 to you, but PayPal takes away the fees, which amount to $5, just as an example. And almost every online platform does this. So, if you take on freelance projects through Upwork, for example, Upwork takes away 10 to 20%, Airbnb also takes away some amount, and so on. So it is a completely normal process for the platform to take a certain fee. What would be wrong in this scenario is if you simply recorded the net amount, meaning the amount after the fees, as revenue, which is 95. That is incorrect. The correct way would be to record the total invoice amount of 100 and then record the five fees or however much they are as expenses. Then you have 100 in revenue minus five in costs, resulting in 95 for this transaction. However, it is absolutely crucial that you separate these and this is for two reasons. The first reason is the calculation of value-added tax because you pay the tax on the 100 and not just on the 95. And we are happy to take a closer look at that. If you receive 100 gross, the value-added tax amount from that is 15.97. This means the net amount, which is actually your net revenue, would be 84.03 if the gross amount is 100. On the cost side, you then have the five PayPal fees. Since PayPal is not based in Germany, these fees are exempt from value-added tax. This means that on the cost side, you do not have the option to claim input tax because PayPal simply does not show any value-added tax. If you were to record only the amount that is paid out to you, which is $95, instead of the total revenue in your accounting, the calculation of value-added tax would also change. Then you calculate with a gross amount of 95, subtract the 19% value-added tax, which amounts to 15 17. This means in the end, you have less value-added tax, specifically 080. That doesn't sound like a lot at first, but your invoices will usually be higher than $100. They might be small amounts individually, but over the course of an entire year, they really add up significantly. This means that by offsetting the fees, your value-added tax calculation is incorrect. And honestly, you don't want that because it will eventually lead to trouble with the tax office and a back payment of value-added tax. The second reason why this is wrong or why you should definitely avoid always booking only the payout amount is certain options. In your self-employment, specifically in accounting, you have certain options you can choose from that depend on your revenue. For example, the small business regulation. You can always take advantage of this small business regulation if your revenue was below a certain threshold in the previous year and is expected to be below that threshold in the current year. But of course, we are talking about the total revenue and not the payout amount. That means the $100 should be taken as the basis and not just the $95. And for that, it is important that these $100 are recorded somewhere. Therefore, for these options, it is absolutely crucial that you record your entire revenue. Other options that play a role include, for example, the distinction between accrual and cash accounting or the obligation for traders to prepare a balance sheet, which also applies if you exceed a certain annual profit or annual revenue in euros. I hope this topic has helped to raise your awareness a bit about the whole issue of offsetting fees and proper accounting. If you have specific examples or questions, feel free to leave a comment under this video and I'll be happy to help you out. And if you are self-employed or a freelancer and need help with your self-employment with topics like taxes, accounting, etc., then take a look at our offer. We are a specialized service provider for freelancers and self-employed individuals, and we are happy to assist you. How we can do this specifically, you will find out if you click here, or you can simply watch more videos on this channel, for example, this one or this one. 